Hey everyone, and welcome to Cannabis Processing and Technology. Today, we'll be covering an overview of the tools available for outdoor growers so you can know this too. Growing cannabis outdoors doesn't require much. It's not exactly backbreaking gardening work, requiring a number of gardening tools. And if growing above ground, you pretty much just need a pot and some potting soil to drop a seed into. If growing in ground, just make sure that your soil isn't so loose and sandy that water passes straight through it and isn't firm like clay so that the water has a hard time getting through. If either of these are the case, I'd recommend not using the ground soil. Although if you don't have a choice, then amending it with a layer of organic matter compost will help a lot with either of the issues. Instead, the tools we'll be covering here are more situational to help adjust your outdoor grow space to one that is more cannabis friendly. Because of this, if you don't have any environmental or pest issues, then this guide probably won't help much. So unlike indoor grows, the tools available to assist outdoor growers are typically things that can only adjust as opposed to fully control the environment to be more favorable for cannabis growth. And unfortunately, because there's no tool to change the weather, a lot of these methods will not work unless the plant is enclosed. But before needing to enclose your plants, there are a few simple and less effective ways to slightly adjust a plant's environment. Placing your plant under the shade in hot environments, covering your plant with a frost blanket in cold environments, blowing air on your plants with a fan to combat high humidity, and misting your plants with water to combat low humidity all help to offset slight variances in the environment. For major adjustments though, an enclosure is important for your plant success to protect it from extreme environmental conditions. Starting with the cheapest option, we have a basic plastic enclosure that can be homemade with something as simple as a few plastic pipes and a clear plastic polyethylene sheet. And while the DIY options are simple to make, for those that don't want to build one from scratch, pre-made polyethylene plastic enclosures are also cheap to buy in all shapes and sizes, making these a good option for a few plants short term. For something sturdier than plastic, there are a ton of options to choose from, and these will vary wildly in price based on size, features, and materials used to make it with pros and cons for each material type. Although for the price and quality, polycarbonate greenhouses are a great option. No matter what you choose though, make sure that the greenhouse is at least 6 feet tall, as outdoor plants will easily grow to at least that high with a typical spring to summer vegetative stage. Once the plants are enclosed, then a lot of tools become effective in adjusting the plant's environment. And the first tool every enclosure needs is a humidity and temperature reader. Just be sure to buy one that's rated for outdoor use. To ward off heating issues, a shade cloth on top of the greenhouse, which comes in different percentages to control how much light you want to let through, as well as an exhaust fan installed on the top of the enclosure, is the simplest option, followed by evaporative coolers and air conditioning units for more extreme heating issues. For combating the cold, generally insulating the greenhouse with thicker walls, such as lining everything with bubble wrap, is good enough to keep the plants nice and warm, although portable heaters can also be used against extreme cold if needed. Humidifiers and dehumidifiers can help with humidity issues, and since the enclosure blocks out outside wind, be sure to get a fan blowing on the plants to keep them healthy and strong. Other than fluctuations in the environment, the biggest risk with growing outdoors is a constant exposure to bugs. 
While indoors, this is easy to control. Outdoors, there's always a risk of some harmful pest making your plant its home. So preventative measures should always be taken when working with an outdoor garden. The most common way is to have a weekly or bi-weekly organic spray rotation to prevent any harmful bugs from nesting on the plants. And what you use will depend on the type of bugs you normally have in your area. Another option to consider for those who check the plants more often is to surround each plant with an insect netting. Just note that this is not a foolproof method and the netting will have to be adjusted constantly as the plants get larger. And for those who want the most natural and organic option, keeping beneficial bugs such as ladybugs, lacewings, and praying mantises around your grow space is a great natural way to lower the undesirable pest population. And these live pest eaters are easily obtained through local nurseries as well as online. Just note that if you have a bug infestation, generally these will not get rid of it. They're more useful for preventative measures. Now, a quick note about lighting, because this is an easy one. Unlike lighting for indoors, which needs to be very intense for the cannabis plant to grow, Outdoor lighting typically has a different purpose, which is to extend the sunlight hours of the day to keep the plant in the vegetative stage. So for supplemental lighting, if your goal is to extend the lighting for an hour or two, then just about anything will work. I've gotten the plant to stay in the vegetative stage with just a 5 watt USB nightlight, so any small table lamp shining on the plant will work. Finally, why I recommend fabric pots as the pot of choice for all indoor grow setups? Outdoors, a clay or cement pot provides more protection to the roots against spikes of extreme temperature. So depending on your situation, you might be better off with an insulated pot. And that's it. So if you like this video, check out our website at weedalepot.com for more cannabis time lapses, grow tutorials, processing guides, and product reviews.